So just to review again, when you have two variables, um, like the vegetarian diet and poor health, it could be that the vegetarian diet is causing the poor health, it could be that the poor health is causing the vegetarian diet, or it could be that some third variable that we don't know about is causing both vegetarian diet and poor health. Maybe, for example, uh, people who are particularly anxious tend to worry a lot, stress themselves out, and this gives them poorer health. And because they're anxious, they also worry about their health a lot and go out and eat a vegetarian diet. So. I mean, that, that's probably not what's going on, but just some one one random possibility of, of hundreds of different possibilities that I came up with off the top of my head. So in order to be able to prove, like, what would you have to do to prove that vegetarian diet causes poor health? Well, again, the reason we can't say that vegetarian diet causes poor health is largely because we have this potential for a confounding variable here. In order to prove that the one thing causes the other, we really would like to rule this out and say there are no confounding variables that are, are potential influencers of these other variables. We wanna rule out the confounding variables so we can draw a direct connection and say vegetarian diet really does cause poor health. So the way that you would do this, the way that you'd go about proving that one thing causes another is by going beyond simply doing a correlational study and doing a special kind of study called an experiment. Now, we tend to think of experiments sort of in these vague terms as this thing that scientists do in laboratories with chemicals and lasers. And it, it, it could be, experiment could be done with a pen and, and pencil with very simple tools. Um, the point of an experiment is to solve that issue of not being able to prove causation. The point of an experiment is to prove that one thing causes another. So. To recap, we, we've said this already, but just to make sure it's clear, the problem is that you can't tell if one thing causes another, and you usually, the reason that you can't tell this is because of potential confounding variables, these other things that could be influencing the data, and you just don't know what they are. So you don't know what's causing these results. So the solution is, if possible, to rule out those variables so that nothing else is, is, is having an influence on the variables that you're looking at. So I'm gonna talk about this a bit more in a minute, but just to be clear, if I were to ask you on a test, what's the main advantage of an experiment? You should have it drilled into your head. The main advantage of an experiment um, is that it allows us to prove, to see cause and effect. It's not just something that we have to do in science. We, you know, a, a common wrong answer that's put up to this kind of question is, uh, we have to do experiments because it's the only valid way to do scientific research. And that's absolutely not true. You could do correlational studies. You can do studies just of single variables where you're not trying to, to show even a relationship between variables. And you can do it in a very scientific way. So we don't always want to know cause and effect. It's not always worth it to us to go to the bother of finding out. So sometimes a single variable or looking at a correlation is plenty good enough for us. And sometimes it's the only thing we can do. So it's totally scientific to do other things besides experiments, but if we want to prove that something causes something else, we go with an experiment. Let's look back at our example with snake bites and ice cream sales, just to go with a silly, stupid, obvious example. So the idea in experiment is that we start off preferably by holding everything constant, controlling all the variables so that potential confounding variables aren't changing. If they're not changing, then they can't be influencing our results. So for example, if we are concerned that temperature is having an effect, instead of doing the experiment out there in the world where there's all kinds of noise and all kinds of things influencing the results potentially, we bring the experiment into the laboratory and we hold the temperature and other variables constant by doing things like air conditioning the room, keeping uh, noises out of, out of the room. Uh, don't put your laboratory right next to a construction site just in case that has an influence. You hold as many variables constant as possible, especially ones that are likely to influence your results. Then once everything is being held constant, you pick one thing, you manipulate one variable. So in this case, we bring a bunch of participants into the room and we give some of them ice cream. We hold everything constant and manipulate this one thing. Then we see if the box of snakes in the room is going to make a beeline for those participants and bite them. In other words, the third step is to see if the other variables change as a result. So again, we hold everything constant, so nothing's changing. Then we manipulate just one thing at a time, 
and see if that one thing causes a, res a result, a change in other things. And because we have these highly controlled conditions in which, not which nothing is changing, there's no influence of these extraneous or confounding variables, then we can make a conclusion about the one thing causing the other. 